Welcome in everyone to Scoop Du Jour. I'm Jordan Black. As we wrap up season two of Scoop Du Jour, I first want to give a really big thank you to all of the amazing guests. It is really such a treat and a pleasure to be able to do this. Um, I say so many times that it's a passion project and it is so much fun just to be able to decompress from the nine to five, from the wedding planning, from whatever is going on and really do this for fun. Now, a lot of times it does feel like work because I do pour a lot of work and, and time and energy into this, but um, it is such a treat. So a big thank you. Um, and a thank you to everyone who listens. Um, Got to do a plug for rate, subscribe, review, all the things. If you're watching this on YouTube, you see that I'm like trying to navigate this new banner that I have. So um, a shout out to Believe for the new graphics. This is a solo episode of Scoop Du Jour, a solo scoop, if you will. We're going to make it a little different. And um, we're calling this the summer before I turned 30 with 30 um, pieces of advice, words to live by, not just from me, but from people in my life that I know, that I trust, that I believe in, and who who mean so much to me. And I've pulled them and I've asked them to answer this question and to share those pieces of, of advice or words of wisdom with me, and I will now share them with you. So without further ado, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Scoop Du Jour, this solo scoop. As I mentioned, if you enjoyed this one, please feel free to rate, subscribe, review all the things. Um, give us a thumbs up on YouTube and um, enjoy this episode so we can come back for more. Well, it wouldn't be a Jordan type episode if I wasn't writing things down. Um, I always take notes for for every guest that I have. Usually they're typed out, but you know what? I'm a writer. I, I like to write. I like pens. I like paper. I like school supplies. And so when people were, I was asking them for, for these words of wisdom, I wrote them all down. And you know what I titled them? 30 for 30. So it is sports related. How about that? Um, and I'm just going to go through these. If something sparks you know, uh, a story, an event, um, a, I don't know, another mantra. Like, I'm just going to chit chat. I'm just going to go through my little janky notebook and um, I'm going to, you know, reminisce and, and talk before I turn 30 at the end of September, which um, is cool, is nerve wracking, is exciting, is all the things. Um, share with me what it was like to turn 30. Um, and what, how you were feeling. I'm feeling good. I think, you know, my mom always says this. And I think a lot of these things in this episode, I'll say my mom said, my dad said, because I um, trust and respect and admire them so much. But my mom always says every birthday is a good one. And we believe in celebrating things so big. So um, I will definitely be doing that for my birthday. And I'm so excited to be able to share it with friends. Um, yeah, before I jump into it, I'm, you know, really lucky and um, grateful to have just started a new job, my second job in, in corporate America. And if you've kind of been following along, you know that, um, I was only in, in my first corporate America job for, for one year, but what was, um, really special is that I had a really, um, wonderful boss who I trust and admire. And he took me with him to another company. And, um, I am so grateful for that opportunity because he, like so many people who I'll talk about in this episode, is someone who um, I respect and who I've learned a lot from. And um, it's been really cool to see my career outside of traditional journalism grow while still pursuing all of these other amazing things in journalism that I I love and that are my roots. So as I said, let's jump in to my 30 pieces. Like I said, advice, words to live by, words of wisdom. I feel like it goes hand in hand with Scoop Du Jour and, and what it's all about because every episode I ask everyone what their favorite piece of advice was and it gave me a chance to reflect as I turn 30 and as some of my friends are already 30, some are not even close to 30 um, on just who they are, what makes them them, um, friends, family, um, some are well past 30, double 30, you know, we, we were talking family members too. So all the people that that make my life whole helped me compile this list and, and I really you know, did some some reflecting um, ahead of this milestone birthday. So without further ado, um, and I, I think I might add in who it's from. We'll just like feel how it goes. I, I'm deciding if I want to like say 
you know, who gave me which advice and, and all of that. But first one comes from one of my best friends um, in the world, someone who means so much to me um, and who is always there for any piece of advice, especially when it comes to all this wedding content. We call her my wedding consultant. Um, don't sweat the small stuff and it is all small stuff. And she was saying she got this piece of advice in our leadership class that we took all through high school. And it's funny because we kind of goofed about this class. Like we would get to school super early to take it. And um, at the time didn't realize like how meaningful it was, but yeah, don't sweat the small stuff and it is all small stuff, which kind of leads into the second piece, which is um, also from a good girlfriend. So I, I, I should preface this with, I have um, a group of seven girlfriends from high school and we were all still the best of friends. And I cherish this friendship so much because we have moved everywhere. We've lived everywhere. We don't live in the same places. Some of us do live in the same places. And um, it's funny how each piece or, will lead into probably another piece, but it's to value those friendships. And um, these people are people who show up for me all the time and we show up for each other and we celebrate each other and we just love each other and we are family. And so the second one is most things aren't a matter of life and death. Like most things are not that serious. Um, and life is not serious, right? Like most things, you know, are, are going to be okay. Um, so I feel like those two are, are a little similar. Um, number three, if you've listened to the episode with Maddie Gardner, um, it, it comes from her. She said, own your accomplishments. This was something that it took a while for her to do. I think it takes a while for all of us to do is to be proud of the things that you've done and own them. And especially, I think, as women, we are, you know, maybe more inclined to, to, to shrink our accomplishments, but really to fill up your space and to be so proud of the things that you have done. And I love that one from her. And I, I always think about it. Um, Fourth is one that probably everyone has heard and one that I especially have to um, remember a lot of times uh, it's coming to me with this wedding stuff when every day I'm scrolling on Instagram and I'm like, I want this thing for my wedding or I wish I could do this or, you know, I want a honeymoon here. You know, it's job things, everything. Comparison is the thief of joy. I tell this to my friends. Now I have to live the advice, right? We always give advice. Um, it's just a matter of can we listen to the advice we give. So easy to compare. And that is such a hard thing to do because you forget the amazing, wonderful things that you have yourself. Also, I feel like I'm over explaining a lot of these. A lot of them are self-explanatory, but um, you know, some of them mean something. Okay. This one comes from our, our Colton, who was so honored to be on the podcast um, and so proud. You know, he was like checking the downloads and um, all the things, sharing with his friends. So I was so appreciative to have him. Um, but he said, do the hard things now on the show. Um, he's told me that so many times. And I'll remind him of that thing, you know, when he's doing fantasy football or whatever instead of X, Y, Z. But his mantra with that is like, there is nothing worse than being underprepared. And I think so many of us can attest to that. And I always think about that with like prepping for doing an interview like this or a job interview or like a test, right? Like if you're a, a mentoring a UNC student through this program and, um, you know, he's going to start interviewing and I, like, I would just want to preach be the most prepared person in the room. And I always would be that way with sports stuff. Um, you just do do the hard thing. That's the hard thing is like to study and to, to get ready. And um, I love that one. Okay. Six one comes from a good friend from um, Arkansas. And we always hear this, but I love this one. And I feel like it is especially coming to play with, you know, the AI of it all, maybe work smarter, not harder. And um, what she meant from this is like, just get, get your stuff done in the best way that you can. And it also just reminds me of something one of my best friends in the world um, from college tells me, she's just like, do what you can with what you have. And, and that is be smart about about how you work with your day, with your life, with your workouts, with whatever. We all know what this one means, but it's just be efficient with your time um, and your energy and right, like pour into the people that pour back into you. And I think that's working hard or working smart um, as well. So that one's pretty self-explanatory, but sometimes you forget about it. 
All right. This one comes from my dear, dear, dear friend from UNC who, um, I mean, I feel like I'm so lucky to say that I have so many best friends, um, but these really are like the best people who, one, took the time to do this for me, and two, um, again, that I just appreciate so much. Um, and again, another tangent is that I was dating someone one time, and he told me, you can't have more than one best friend. And I really took that to heart in such a negative way. And it was such a red flag for me because I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I think you can have as many best friends as you want. I think there's no cap on friendships. I think even as you get older, you can, you know, uh, there's something to be said about having a small circle. But if someone is a great friend to you, call them your best friend. If the, your mom is your best friend, if your brother is your best friend, why, why does the limit exist? Um, I just think that's silly. But that's not what I was going to say. Okay. What Madison says to me um, and to everyone, and um, this is something that my family does really well, is celebrate all the things. Celebrate everything, big things, small things. Celebrate, you know, Valentine's Day in a, such a huge way if that's meaningful to you. Celebrate Halloween in a huge way if that's big to you. Um, celebrate everything. Um, the promotion, the first day of school. I just life is worth celebrating. And I think we should do that. And I love that she reminded me of that one. Um, this one is so great. Prioritize and make time for the things that bring you joy. Um, I'm realizing that so much now with, you know, I have some great friends in Chicago here and um, we were kind of having a chit chat about this um, on a walk. And there are so many wonderful things that bring us joy, whether it's like trying a new restaurant or just like sitting on the couch with your girlfriends. Or for me, a lot of times it's like FaceTiming my girlfriends when we're away. Um, or for Colton and me, it might be watching a game or um, like we said, trying something new. But we have to make those a priority as we get older, right? Especially like for folks who have kids or really demanding jobs, all the things. Prioritize the good stuff because um, leading to another one, which... I'll go out of order, but um, from another good Arkansas friend, great Arkansas friend, you're replaceable at work. You're not replaceable at home. And I think home is where a lot of those joyful things are. Um, so she says, slow down and appreciate the things that matter. And right, those are the things that bring us joy. Cooking, going on those walks, um, experiencing your city, all of those special things. Um, like I've told her, like, as soon as you leave, your job, they will replace you. They will be okay without you. Um, and one of my former coworkers recently was saying, you know, you can't be in love with your work or married to your work because it's not going to love you back. But you know what will? Your family and your hobbies and your passions. And so I think those two kind of go um, hand in hand. This one is so good. And I'm, I have to bring up um, a quote, again, from the seven girlfriends. You know who you are. Um, and um, why I wasn't ready to bring this up. This one is so good. Okay. So she says, you're not everyone's cup of tea. Not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone's going to love you. Hopefully you're kind to everyone to give them their best chance. But you know what? Not everyone is going to love you. And this is the best way to describe it that my friend Kelly said. She said, um, this is a life mantra, which is I'd rather be someone's favorite shot of tequila rather than everyone's cup of tea. How good is that? Like, come on. And it's like the perfect one for our friend group, especially. Like, we're just tequila lovers. Um, but that is so good. Um, I've heard that from so many people. Like, just don't change you are. There goes my robot back. Um, <laughs> side producer today. Okay. This one is from someone who I so, so, so admire, one of my best college friends who I just love and adore her work ethic. And she is one of the hardest workers, smartest people I know. She says, her mom always tells her, Rome wasn't built in a day. So be patient. Be patient about things that you're working on. Be patient about that promotion at work. Be patient about like getting through that book you're reading through. Like just be patient. And we can all probably use a bit more patience, right? Um, I'm like even impatiently waiting for everyone to um, get our wedding, save the dates at the moment. And I'm like, have they gotten them? Have they said anything? Like, I mean, 
it's not really a good example for this, but um, yeah, a, go a good thing to remember. And then she says, her husband says, so now we're on to, um, I guess technically number 12, because I skipped. If you're not improving, you're getting worse, which I thought was like the toughest yet best one. And I have really, even since she sent this, been trying to live that one, like learn something every day, get better with whether it's your workout routine or um, eating, but I mean, just anything like learning something, um, being better about your money, like improve something. Um, and I've really taken that to heart and Colton and I have had a number of discussions about it. Um, so that one, I was like, okay, very, very like straightforward and will make you think, but really good one. Okay. Number 13 comes from Mr. Black, who was also a podcast guest, my dad. And he had a, a pretty long description about this one that, um, he shared with me over text and he's, I'll, I'll share in a bit how many and other ones that, that came from me that I've learned from him, I guess I should say. But the gist of his is to never settle and in that sense to exceed expectations. And the way he kind of explained it is, you know, there's something predetermined for all of us and it that can kind of, you know, lead into whatever and however you believe, of course. But um, it also kind of goes into your background and your education and like the opportunities you've been given. But do the best with what you can and what you have um, to, to not settle and to exceed that predetermined almost destiny, if you will. Um, and I, I think one of the things I'll say that I'm like proud of about myself and Colton and I have been talking a lot about this as we do, you know, work through some of those like pre-marriage workbooks and stuff is we like have conversations about what we love about each other and what we love about ourselves and like what we can work on and, um, you know, love languages, all that stuff. And I think one of the things that I know he's proud of and of me and I'm proud of, of myself is like, I don't like to settle. And I don't, I don't think I like to surround myself with people that do. And it doesn't mean like we can't, you know, have calm days and all that kind of stuff. But I think we're always going back again to improving and just getting better and to striving for your best and to just kind of striving for, for greatness and whatever that means to you, interpret it how you will. Um, but hearing that one from my dad was really cool just to kind of exceed expectations, whether you set them for yourself, whether they've, you know, been set to you by a professor, a mentor, a parent, an employer, um, and go above and beyond. So a long, a long winded one there. Okay. Another one from the group of seven. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want up front. Like be straightforward. And this friend is so good about that, but you know what? So successful because of it. Like whether it's in life, at work, in relationships, ask, and you probably will receive it. If you don't ask, the answer is always no, right? Um, Acacia Clement, when she was on the podcast, she actually was talking about how she asked for more work. She wanted to be on air more. She wanted to do the bigger stories, the bigger shows um, for the New York Racing Association. And I loved that. And it kind of reminded me um, to do the same and go out there. And um, I, I just thought that was so poignant and um, a really, really good one. So you got to always ask for anything and, and and make that happen for you. This is another great one from a wonderful friend of mine from Carolina. And it is so good. Okay. They're all so good, right? I mean, have we had a bad one? Okay. There is strength in kindness, but there is also strength in strength. I'm, I'm reading kind of her exact words, as you can tell. Be kind, but also stick up for what you believe in. Be true to yourself and don't let others take advantage of you. So I feel like that's really, my life mantra has always been to kind of kill him with kindness. But I love that she said there's, you know, certain times really that you got to be strong. You got to stick up for what you believe in. And maybe that's not always, they're not always going to go together, but they probably should, right? Lead with the kindness um, and still stick up for what you believe in and be strong while you do it. And she is the perfect example of it. So um, I hope she's listening to this one. Okay. We did the work one and the same friend who shared the 
replaceable at work one shared this one and it is kind of poetic she said sometimes you make tv sometimes you make art and this one of course really applies to those of us who have been in tv who or who are in tv but what she said a professor in college at mizzou shared this with her but what she really means is some days are adventures and some days are are normal like some days you're you're making the art and some days you're making tv and again for those of us in tv it might be you know some days you're the the lead story um the breaking news and some days you might just be doing the routine you know heat wave story i don't know um but not every day can be art and she also explained it like this like some days you just need that sunday lazy couch day where maybe you get up to go get groceries. It's okay if you don't even do that. Um, but some days you might be going to hike a new area or try a new restaurant or travel to a new place. That's art. And it's okay to have both of those days um, and to kind of have the balance of both. And I just, I loved how that was worded. So that was a really good one from her professor. From another amazing person and friend in Arkansas. She says, show up and show out how you act somewhere is key. Like we aren't all experts in everything and we're not all experts the first time we do things. Um, but people gravitate toward your attitude and your presence. And she, this person is the, the perfect example of that. She does so many things so well, but she also comes with such an aura about her. Um, because she just radiates this confidence and poise and whether she kind of fakes it till she makes it or she really means it, you would never know because she acts the same throughout and that's what's key, right? So in her instance, you know, it's whether she's anchoring or she's teaching a fitness class or, um, and she's going to know exactly who it is and so many people will too, but you know, emceeing an event or whatever, you're not an expert at all of those things the first time you're there, but you show up and you show out and you come with confidence um, and people will buy it, right? Fake it till you make it is kind of the, the theme there. And that one um, was so good. Okay. We're now rolling in to my pieces. So I don't know what number we're at, but I know, I promise you we're getting 30 pieces of advice or words of wisdom or mantras, whatever you want to call them. Um, you're probably getting more if if you've counted. Okay. I like this one that I've just thought about a lot. Be nice to strangers. And I think it's kind of you get what you give. I was at Walgreens the other day. That's like where I do my FedEx. I don't know why. And um, the lady there, she's so nice. But I, I could tell she was just like kind of in a mood when I got there. And I was like, you probably remember me. I'm back. And she was like, you remember me? I was like, well, you're always so pleasant every time I'm here. And again, I'm not saying this to like boast about my attitude, but she immediately kind of switched her mood based on mine. And you just, you can lift up someone's day. You can compliment someone on the street. You can tell people their hair is pretty there. You and, and I think you should mean it too. Like, I don't think you should randomly throw random compliments around, but I think being nice to strangers means a lot. And I think you just don't know what everyone's going through. Um, and it can't hurt, right? I mean, it kind of makes you feel better. And I've just always tried to do that one. I think we can always do better. The next one is don't rush through things that matter. This one has come to light for me um, a lot of times at work when I'm just, you know, I, I multitask a lot and I need to be better about not doing that. But I think I, I need to prioritize, you know, a lot of things, but of course there are a lot of things that matter to all of us. Um, take that at, you know, how you will, what, what things matter to you, but don't rush through those things that matter. Um, kind of self-explanatory. This one comes from my mom. Um, every time we see anyone who is asking for money, and again, this isn't a, a way to, to boast, it's just a lesson she's always taught our family is don't ask, just give. And it's not, I don't want to say that it's always about money because it's kind of giving of your time, giving of your energy. And it's something that she's, of course, been afforded the the time to do is to be the most philanthropic person I know with, again, her time and her energy and her money. Um, but she says, don't ask, just give. I think this can be interpreted many different ways, whether it's 
giving of your time to an organization, giving your money to someone who might be asking because maybe you don't know their circumstances. Most of the times you don't. Um, giving of yourself to a friend in need or a family member in need. Um, just giving, you know, rather than taking all the time, I think is, is the essence of that one. Okay, what my, my mom always says also is something that has always stuck with me, advice I always tell friends, um, and something I think about a lot. Friends for a reason, friends for a season, friends for life. All of the people in your life will fall into one of these categories, and that is okay. Um, sometimes you want people to fall into a different one than they might, and I think we just have to kind of reconcile where people might be at, at certain times. And they can go into different places at certain times as well. Um, and I, I think, like I said, it's a hard thing to kind of grapple with as you get older. Like maybe your friend for life was only a friend for a season um, and that's okay. But just, I think if you really think about it for a second, you can probably picture where everyone falls in that little poem, jingle. Okay, this one comes from Mama, who, if you know, this whole podcast kind of started on the um, on the back of what Mama liked and loved about sports was was storytelling. And so, when I think about Mama, she always said to her girls, her four daughters, um, and she still says, you know, to them and to all of us, is always be a lady. And what she means by that is just to always like kind of do the right thing, say the right thing be poised, be gracious. Um, and my mom kind of reiterated it to me when I was leaving my TV job. And I left on fine terms as far as like just leaving for a, a new state. Um, and, you know, some things didn't work out how we all kind of played them out in our head. And my mom was like, just be a lady and no one can say anything bad about anything, you know, kind of goes along with always telling the truth. I think we said that in season one solo scoop, like always tell the tr truth and no one can say that your story is wrong, but just always be a lady no matter where you are, right? Um, To your friends, to your family, all of those things. Okay. My dad always says, don't just ask people for favors, like keep up with people all the time because then when you do need a favor, they're more inclined. But what he means is kind of just always keep up your network and keep in touch with your network. And I always remember, I try to always remember that one, like keep in touch with people that, you know, might be valuable to you, but even if they're not, you know, just keep in touch with, with the right people. This one I like, and I don't remember where I saw it, but it's a really good one. Um, keep promises to yourself. If you bet on yourself, you'll never lose. And it reminds me of um, one of our great friends who is a fitness influencer and does all these amazing challenges and stuff. And she's, you know, kind of always working towards something. And it's like a promise that you've kept to yourself that I will do this thing on this day. I will do this thing today. Um, I will do this thing for this event. Like that's a way to, to promise yourself that you will get to where you want to be. And I think that works in fitness and in work and kind of like all of these pieces do, they work for everything. But, um, I really like that one. Um, okay. Yeah. Now we're talking about just like, you know, important things we've learned now that we're almost 30. You get what you pay for. So you have to invest in the right stuff, right? Like, and again, take that how you will. But we know what things are worth investing in. And um, everyone I think will have an, a different interpretation of that. But as I've gotten older, you can kind of see what, um, what the good stuff is. And then I think along with that, it's like actually invest, right? Save too and prepare for the future and all of those things. If you're afforded the luxury of being able to do that. This one is from, okay, I now switch my workouts, but I used to always do Peloton and I don't remember what instructor it is. If anyone knows, let me know. They would say, like, when I was doing the workouts, and again, me, buy into, like, all of the cliche mantras, but I loved this one, and I wrote it down. How you do anything is how you do everything. And so I would start my day with, like, these boot camps running, doing all the workouts, and, and I'm thinking, well, how I do this workout is how I'm going to do my, 
live shot or how I do this, you know, workout is how I'm going to like treat my significant other, whatever. And I just, I think that's so key. How you do anything is how you do everything. And maybe that's a quote from a really significant person. I don't know. Okay. This one is a big one to me and it took me a long time to get to this point, but it was don't let your career define you. I was a person who was so wrapped up in being identified as a sports anchor, sports reporter. I thought it was cool. Um, Obviously it was my dream and it was all I ever wanted to do, but I also loved the idea of it. And I loved the title. I loved when people told me or asked, rather asked me what my job was and I got to tell them that and they smiled and they asked so many questions. Um, You don't get as many questions when you tell people you're like managing corporate communications. Um, So I just think as I get older, I've realized that your career doesn't define you and so many other things do. And it's kind of cliche, but you get to the end of your life and you think about what people are going to say about you and it's not like she or he was this amazing, you know, financial analyst or, I mean, I hope that people will say that about all of these people with incredible careers, but I just don't want it to define who I am as a friend, as a partner, um, as a daughter. And I've really tried to kind of separate my identity from my career. And I think I've also tried to relay that to some friends as well. All right, we're almost done. I'm almost out of breath. This one my mom and I always talk about, and trust me, we are still learning it. Don't, you can't expect people to do and behave exactly how you would in a certain situation. What I mean by that is I am, I'm sensitive, okay? So if I am waiting for someone's reaction to be exactly how I would react in a situation, like that's just so unfair to them. Now, don't get me wrong, I do except people sometimes and I'm let down, but that's wrong. And so you just can't expect people to behave exactly how you would. Um, And because again, is our way the right way? Probably not, but you know, in that sense, we're always kind of waiting for a letdown. This one um, again is one that my mom and I talk about a lot, but also with these amazing friends of mine that I'm so honored to know and love and cherish is that you choose your family. I'm so blessed with a wonderful family and a family that I'm very close with, but my friends are my family. Like they are my people. They are there for me. They show up for me. I show up for them. Um, I like, especially with planning a wedding, you think about your life far from now because you're like, I want to invite the people who are going to be in my life in 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, And of course your family is going to be in there too, but you also want your best, best, best friends who are your family. And I think you choose those people a lot of times. So choose wisely. And I think I've given more than 30 pieces, but I just have to wrap up with one. And that is my favorite one, which is the, the mantra that kind of we all say as a family. Um, and it's just, and I think I said it in my last episode, is just to kill him with kindness. Um, being kind will never hurt. It will always be the easier way. And I think it's just the best thing that you can do. So with that, as I wrap up on like, I kind of want to keep it on like the 30 minute mark because I think that's cool. 30 for 30, 30 pieces. Um, thanks to everyone who helped me pick out these pieces and give, gave me more mantras and pieces and words to live by. Um, and who helped with this season and many seasons of Scoop Du Jour to come. Um, again, really cool to like reflect and just think back and just think about doing this as a side project, but also something that really means a lot to me. So, um, just one big, great thank you. And here's to, um, 30 years, but also to a wonderful season of Scoop to Jura. Thank you so much um, for being here, for listening, and for um, helping make this dream, passion, side project come to life. So um, yeah, just all the thank yous for everything. All right. With that, 
Um, one more plug to rate, review, subscribe. You know where to find it. Scoop to Door Podcast on Instagram and um, wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to do all the things to help us continue this show. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.